was about to make a TikTok, and my daughter came in with this. Sassy. Mom, I'm going to tell you this before they tell you this, because they're going to say a lie. Because you know how you told me men are providers and protectors, right? Men are providers and protectors. So that means they go outside and work. Okay. Right? Okay. Right? Yeah. So you know how David's dad stay home, right? Yes. While David's mom goes out and work. Okay. So they was bothering me talking about all the other stuff and I was like that's why your dad's a bitch and then he's like I'm gonna tell your mom blah 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 so I was like okay but I don't want you to be mad at me because I call him a bitch because he stays home while his wife is working they want to speak to you downstairs <laughs> oh boy the clip that you just saw and i'm still shaking my head about it the clip that you saw was a tiktok video from a young mother who is taping her daughter i think that's her daughter uh calling somebody else's dad a bitch and from my understanding i don't think that child could be older than eight years old and normally you would think that a child that young the mother would be chastising the child and saying, you know, at least whether it's harshly or it would be, you know, more softly, but it, admonishing the child nonetheless. And this mother didn't. She was shocked because she heard it out of her child's mouth. So that means that that child has heard this from her and her friends. And a lot of times as a parent, you unconsciously say things thinking that that child's out of earshot or you forget the child is there and things come out of your mouth that probably shouldn't. And it's something that you wouldn't say around mixed company, but it's shocking when your words come out of your child's mouth and you can hear the child actually looking for agreement, looking for acknowledgement, like, yeah, you, you're doing the right thing. Uh, yeah, baby, I agree with you. But the thing is she could, she didn't do it on, on film. Let's put it that way. And then she released it out into the wild. That means, guess what? She agrees with this. She agrees with uh, her daughter's assessment that a man at home with the with the wife that's out working and making more, that that man becomes a bitch, becomes a wife. And most women are not in agreement with that. Even though feminism has trained men and women to accept these roles. And I just did a video about PhDs and high earning women and how their biology will not accept a man that makes less or a man that's not running the house. Hell, I remember uh, when I was uh, engaged and me and my fiance were making the same amount of money. And even though she didn't say it, you could see it in her, you know, in, in her face, in her reaction, that she thought the same thing or she felt the same thing because it's not even a thought, she feels the same thing. And when we did our, our, we actually got our W-2s and we looked at them, guess what? Guess what we found out? I made like $50 more and that was just enough to shut her up. Had I made a dollar less, you would think a dollar, a couple of bucks here or there is not gonna make that big of a difference, but it does. And women feel some kind of way, even though they may deny it. But this is something that feminism and feminized America has created. And for a minute, most guys were willing to put up with it. But now guys aren't. You make more than me and you want to hook up with me because you can't find a husband. And a lot of guys are saying, I don't want to go through this because I know how this is going to end. You're going to, you know, we're going to be married five, six, maybe seven years. You're going to take me through hell, a living hell. And then you're going to divorce me and dump me with a bill. Why should I sign up for that? Because there's nothing in it for me. And the way things stand in America today, you know what? I don't blame them. You push men into this path. You, you push women up to the top. You wanted them to be in charge and they become in charge. And guess what? They still want the same thing they did 
50 years ago before you even started. But guess what? Like old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard and guess what? The cupboard is bare. There are not enough breadwinning males for all these females. When you factor in all the advantages that females get in, uh, from the United States government and put it against the average guy that's making about $35,000 a year, things don't stack up. And it gets worse when you talk about the black community, especially with black women's outside expectations. Because really, to get a, keep a black woman happy in America, you're going to have to make at least $65,000 a year or more. Otherwise, she's going to be talking shit. And I actually showed that in a chart with, with the welfare cliff. Because for most women, it's not about the amount of money. It's about the lifestyle. And at some point, the feminists, because it's not up to the men. People keep saying it's up to men. It's not up to the men. It's up to the feminists. You, you put this stuff in place. This is the result that you get out at the other end. That child who's seven years old, she's of Generation Alpha. They're black female. You know, in seven years, in, in 15 years, she's going to be dating age and she's going to have a whole lot of problems because this mindset has been passed down from her millennial mother to this child. And trust believe the A's and the Z's are not playing. She's going to get looked over. But this is how the mindset is being passed down from one generation to the next. You would think that her mother would see the landscape of what's coming. The landscape that she has to go through now was she's probably a single mother. I can't say for sure, but I do believe she's a single mother and she's putting this poison into her child's mind because he stays home and you're going to take shots at him like that because you think it's a negative thing because mommy works out the ho outside the house and daddy's inside the house. We have no idea where the daddy works from home, especially during COVID. But this poison has already been passed down to the next generation. So basically, you know, as far as I'm concerned, if Generation A is going to be like that for black women, it's, <laughs> you know what, man, go ahead and uh, hit the eject button because it's probably over. And if this style is indicative of the next generation of black women, psh, man, ain't no hope. That's all I'm saying. Ain't no hope. But anyway, man, I've rambled on probably much longer than I should. I'm just, I'm just shaking my head, man. Shaking my head by even hearing this and seeing this. But anyway, let me jump off here. This is BGS out, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.